Hi, and welcome to a short product review of the GTEC A30T 3D printer. The A30T is an advanced 3D printer incorporating such features as multi-filament printing with color blending, auto bed leveling, large print area, touch screen control, optical limit switches on the Z-axis, and a rugged metal frame. This is the first video segment I'll be publishing on YouTube via my YouTube channel, Rotorman SA. I'll be concentrating on my initial experiences with the A30T with some comparisons to my first GTEC printer, the i3 Pro. First of all, who am I? My background is electrical engineering and I got my experiences with 3D printing when I purchased my first GTEC printer, the i3 Pro, when I was between engineering gigs about five years ago. I'm an avid amateur radio operator, call sign Kilo Charlie One Sierra Alpha, and I dabble with RC flying. In this segment, I'll walk you through some of the pains I've gone through in getting this 3D printer to cooperate with me and produce good quality print objects. My next segment will show you how to get great prints from the A30T with no stringing. As I've mentioned before, this is not an entry level printer and there is a lot of setup that needs to be done in order to get string free printing as shown in this picture. This is PLA filament running at 193 degrees printing six 832 hex nuts and you'll notice there's very little stringing. The key to getting quality results out of the A30T are numerous. Number one, you have to make sure you're using quality filament and that you've profiled it using a temperature tower to understand what the proper temperature for extrusion is. You have to ensure that your flatbed, your print area, is that flat. And you can use the auto leveling feature or manual. I prefer manual. And then there's the slicer. And all these aspects will be addressed in future videos. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'd like to discuss more about my initial receipt of the A30T and some of the problems that I went through. I ordered my GTEC A30T directly from the GTEC website um, online. And I was pretty uh, pretty happy with how the box came, the shape it was in, and as well as the speedy delivery. Um, I didn't pay any extra for shipping, and I think I had the box within seven days, which was uh, pretty amazing, coming all from China. After I got the box, um, I opened it and started uh, looking through how it was packed up, and it looked pretty pretty substantial, the packing. It has nice foam rubber inserts um, protecting everything. Uh, all the metal surfaces, everything uh, seemed to be um, well uh, packed and uh, no big issues with, uh, with the machine as far as I could tell. But then I uh, kept digging and uh, even through the, the first layer removing the, the gantry, everything looked really good. Uh, the, uh, the gantry moved uh, freely, there wasn't any binding so nothing got bent on any of the... Uh, the mechanics for the gantry. Then I dug a little bit deeper and I noticed that the uh, cooling uh, shroud for the uh, hot end was broken. And so I said, oh, okay, that's not a big deal. I'll, uh, I'll let him know. And you can see that um, it was crushed. And it was odd that the packing material didn't show, the box didn't show any signs of being crushed. So I'm not sure if it was put in the box broken or not. And then I dug a little bit deeper, uh, took the base out, and I realized that the base had been also been crushed. You can sort of see the, the, the deformed faceplate on the base unit, which also forced the uh, Y-axis um, um, rails to bind, so the Y-axis didn't really move as freely as it should. So I said, okay, this is great. Do I send this thing back or will GTEC uh, take care of replacing the parts for me? <clears throat> I dug a little bit deeper and I realized that the crushing of the base unit actually fractured the ribbon cable going to the LCD display, as you can see here. It was cracked, one of the four leads to the resistive touchscreen.
<clears throat> the display worked fine. Touch screen didn't. So I contacted G Tech and they were going to replace all the parts. While I was waiting for the parts to arrive, I jury rigged up using a, a pin, some graphite powder, and a little bit of uh, glue. And I basically shorted out um, the fractured portion of the uh, resistive touchscreen uh, connector on the LCD display and was able to at least verify that things would sort of work with this printer. Also note that um, the super plate that I ordered when I purchased the printer didn't arrive in the box. That came a few days later. G-Tech was really good. They actually sent all replacement parts to me plus um, some stuff that I said wasn't broken um, to make things right with me. Um, I got all those parts about 10 days after my initial complaint that things were broken and G-Tech took care of it. They sent it to me, all new parts. They actually sent me a hot end that I said was fine, but they sent me a hot end. They sent me three or four fans. Um, they sent me a new base unit, uh, and they sent me a new display. Uh, the bad thing was I had to put all this stuff together, which in a way was bad, in a way it was good. I actually really learned how this printer goes together. So I had to take disassemble the broken unit, and take all the electronics, motors, rails, all the stuff that goes on the base unit and transfer it to the good base unit, which took a day, uh, roughly. I took my time, took pictures, and this is a screenshot of the uh, motherboard and where everything gets plugged into. <clears throat> Again, G-Tech was very good in getting me replacement equipment. They got it to me in a timely fashion, which uh, made me feel good. Uh, that I really didn't get uh, uh, have to wait too long to get this thing back in running condition.